I remember when merger was uh, getting ready to take place. I was an 11th grade student in 1968, mm -hmm. but that's kind of the limit of my consciousness. Uh, do you recall uh, what the atmosphere was like? Were there excitement? Were there some fears of eliminating the segregated conference and being a part of uh, the full conference and full church? Right. Well, there were a lot of angst on our side because we were all were already at a disadvantage. But then mm -hmm. we saw uh, a larger uh, possibility of, of not gaining grounds as we go into a much larger system. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we were enjoying our own leadership and uh, therefore we could expect and plan and uh, uh, do the normal things that we had done. In this, uh, we were concerned about the voices at the table mm -hmm. in making these decisions. Yes. And we also noticed that there was a small percentage of our leaders at the table. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we wondered about what impact are we really making? Our bishops and leaders were not absorbed totally. Mm -hmm. And so we experienced mm -hmm. a loss of leadership capacity. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was one of the discussions that we had pre-unification, uh, is that uh, there will be a loss of leadership opportunities for our leaders mm -hmm. and the groundswell of those coming behind us to have opportunities, and, th and that has played itself out. Now we've been in merger for uh, over 50 years. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I would love to hear from you how far you think we've come as a church in terms of full inclusion, or diversity, equity. I think the needle has moved a little. A little. Huh? Uh, but I think we could do a much better job. The diversity that we seek, I'm not sure that even the church knows what it, its goals are. But I, I do think that we remain open to the principle and the teachings of inclusion. Now, whether our actions have caught up with our goals, I don't think we are anywhere near Amazing. where God wants us to be mm -hmm. or even where I want us to be.